guys, it's Jessie V, and I am so excited today because I am wearing my new Halloween merch. It is a really warm, soft, black sweater that I designed myself. I'll come closer, but it says, I'm spooky and I know it. There's a cute little ghost, there's stars around it, it says Jessie V, and actually all the lime green on this is sparkly. I don't know if you can tell by the camera, but it's so cute and so comfortable, and I'm gonna wear this everywhere. <laughs> this October. So this merch line is limited edition because it is only out for Halloween. So if you would like this I'm spooky and I know it's sweater, the link is down below in the description. But that's not all we have this Halloween. I have also come out with pop sockets because you guys have been asking for these for so long. It says the same thing as the sweater, I'm spooky and I know it, and I cannot wait to put this on my phone. But I think the things I am most excited about are the Halloween. Halloween plushies that I have for you guys. Now, these are not your usual plushies. They are very bizarre, so prepare yourselves. This one is a vampire mermaid unicorn. This plushie is literally all the things that I love in one. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it's creepy but it's amazing. And then I also have zombie unicorns. I mean, look, you could see her brains. So if you would like to own some very bizarre Jessie V plushies, the link is down below in the description as well. So yeah, a lot of limited edition Halloween stuff. I'm so excited. Before we get started, I just want to make a couple shout outs. First, I'm going to be announcing the winner of the September backdrop. And that person is Hayden Powell. So congratulations. I have DM'd you, send me your shipping information. And secondly, I just want to give a huge shout out to a few more schools that actually started Yana Groups. Those amazing schools are Edison High School, Dream Technical Academy, Finland Elementary, and College Park Middle School. You guys have taken such an amazing initiative to start these groups and I'm so excited for you and I'm so excited for your schools, so thank you. Alright, so without further ado, today we're going to be talking about Winnie the Pooh, my man. So I was scrolling through the internet a few days ago and I came across a lost episode of Winnie the Pooh. And guys, let me tell you, when I was a kid growing up, I watched Winnie the Pooh religiously. But I do have a little secret for you. I was terrified of the bees that chased Winnie the Pooh. Like whenever bees would show up on the screen when I was watching, I would start screaming, I would start crying, I would run away from the TV. So whenever my grandma or my parents watched Winnie the Pooh with me, they had to fast forward all of the scenes with the bees. I was a scaredy cat. And it's weird cause like now in my real life, I love bees. I don't like them on me but I think they're cute. Okay, so like always, I'm firstly gonna give you a little bit of history on Winnie the Pooh, even though I think most of you guys know who he is. I mean, he's an icon. <laughs> we'll get into the lost episode and some other really weird and creepy facts about him and about the show. Inspired by his son's teddy bear, A.A. A. Milne published Winnie the Pooh on October 14th, 1926. I actually had no idea that Winnie the Pooh was created back in the 20s. I knew he was old, but I didn't know he was that old. The very first book about the silly old bear also included Piglet, Eeyore, and Kanga. All the toys in the books are based off of real toys belonging to Christopher Robin. Robin. So the man who created Winnie the Pooh got inspired by his son's plushies, essentially. It wasn't until the second book called The House at Pooh Corner that Tigger was introduced, and he was also based on one of Christopher Robin's stuffed animals. The House at Pooh Corner. I mean, am I just like a two-year-old in my brain, or is that like kind of a funny name. Imagine like a teacher in a classroom at reading time. All right class, gather around. Today I'm going to read you the book called The House at Pooh Corner. I'm sorry, I'm not making fun of Winnie the Pooh. Like, I love that guy. I'm just like a two year old. Like I still have like potty brain. <laughs> Anyways though, once the first books came out with Winnie the Pooh and his friends, everyone instantly loved them. And soon after they came out with the TV shows and the movies that we all know and love. Except I don't know about about you guys, but there was this Winnie the Pooh movie that came out in 2005, so I was like pretty young. It was called Pooh's Heffalump 
movie. And I remember being so creeped out by this movie. The description says, after hearing what they believe is the dreaded Huffalump, Winnie the Pooh and his friends set out to trap the monster. So I just remember the Huffalump being described as this really creepy, scary creature in the woods. And it was like my first horror movie. No, honestly, if you watch it as an adult, it's obviously not scary, but I feel like I'm not alone in saying that that movie freaked kids out. So let's talk about the Lost episode because obviously that's why you clicked on this video. So there are a lot of different versions of what this episode was about. So I'm gonna read you one of those versions. The title of this Lost episode was allegedly named Making Friends the easy way. For some reason, when this episode started, they totally skipped the intro. If you guys used to watch Winnie the Pooh, they had like their whole intro song sequence. This episode just started. There was no intro. It begins with Winnie the Pooh waking up in bed and he was looking around his room and he noticed that the door was open. He looked around scared and confused. He started saying things like, hello, is anybody there? He walked out of his door and looked around and didn't see anybody. He couldn't see his friends. He couldn't see a single creature outside in the woods at all. He fell to his knees and said, why did you all leave me? So he's thinking that his friends literally just deserted him. I don't deserve this, he said, and he started punching the dirt. I need friends. I need to go find some friends. So he got up and started walking through the woods looking for friends. Suddenly, as he was walking, he saw a child in the woods and walked up to this child. It says the child waved at him. And then Winnie the Pooh says, friends forever, and leans over and gobbles down the child. <laughs> and apparently kids who were watching this episode were mortified to see like Winnie the Pooh's mouth open really wide and like gobble the child. It kind of reminds me of like Pennywise if you guys have watched the It movies. After he gobbles down this child, he turns his head to look at the screen of the TV and says you're next. The screen goes black and the words Finn show up on the screen. So <laughs> that's really scary. Imagine being a kid and watching this episode. Now, I'm pretty sure, like 3,000% sure, this is just a creepypasta. At least let's, let's, let's hope that's what it is. There are rumors that it's true, but I feel like if it is true, it was not something that was made by, you know, Disney, because they wouldn't do that. But when I read that, I was so creeped out. Okay, so let's move on to some other weird things. There are a lot of people out there on the internet that have compared Winnie the Pooh and his friends to the seven deadly sins. So they say that apparently Winnie the Pooh is the sin of gluttony. I hope I'm saying that right. Gluttony? <laughs> gluttony? He stuffs himself so much with honey that he constantly gets stuck in doors, in houses. He seems to just consume every pot of honey that he gets his hands on. Then they say Piglet is the sin of greed. It says Piglet is very greedy. Have you ever seen Piglet's house? It's a huge mansion. It's the biggest house in the entire Acre Wood. And Piglet doesn't need a big house because she is so small. Wait, is Piglet a he or a she? Then they say Kanga and Rue represent lust. And this one is kind of offensive. I'll read you what it says. It says they represent lust because they are the only females in the group. Excuse me? Like you don't have a better explanation than that? No. I don't approve. Then it says Tigger represents sloth. It says despite being very active and energetic, Tigger is actually lazy. He barges into homes and makes a huge mess and doesn't even bother to pick things up. Then we have Owl who apparently represents pride. Owl is regarded as the wisest of all animals. However, he cannot read or write. Wait, is that true? Owl is constantly giving advice that does not make any sense or help whatsoever. He has also known to speak at long lengths about his great family and how important and interesting they were. Then we have Eeyore and he apparently represents envy. Eeyore is the lowest on the totem pole. 
That is so me. Who wrote this article? He is very pessimistic and reluctant to join the others because he is envious of them. Then we have Rabbit, who represents Wraith. Is it Wraith or Wrath? Rabbit has a ferocious short temper. When he gets angry, he breaks things and tugs his ears. He is also always fighting caterpillars in his garden. Why would you fight a caterpillar? They're so cute. I've also heard other conspiracies about people comparing Winnie the Pooh and his friends to mental disorders. I think you guys are probably familiar with that. But the thing is, a lot of people find that comparison to be a little bit offensive, especially if you have the mental disorder yourself. So we're not gonna go into those today. Day, but feel free to research that on your own time if you want to. Okay, this next fact is actually so sad and my heart hurt when I found this out. So the 100 acre wood that you see in the shows, in the books, in the movies, the place that they all live actually burnt down in real life. And you're probably thinking, Jesse, how could a fake forest in a movie burned down in real life. Well, the 100 acre wood is actually based off of a real forest in real life. It's a place called the Ashdown Forest in East Sussex. And it says firefighters in England battled a blaze that broke out in the forest that inspired the 100 acre wood. They were able to put the fire out, but it was kind of too late. I mean, the entire forest is pretty much ruined, which is so sad. It says that firefighters and police are still investigating but they don't think the fire was deliberate, which is good. But everyone is still devastated, especially if you're huge fans of the books and grew up with them and grew up with the shows. Like, it sucks. And the last weird Winnie the Pooh thing we're gonna talk about is a recall that happened back in 2005, I believe. Basically, Winnie the Pooh came out with a bunch of these play sets and they started selling really fast because of how popular Winnie the Pooh was. In fact, before the recall, they had already sold 49,000 units. But soon after they realized that the paint on all of these play sets had an excessive amount of lead which is deadly. And obviously little kids like to suck on everything, so they were probably licking the paint, sucking on the, the bars of the play sets. Like, kids want to eat everything. So this was all over the news to inform parents right away. Now what I am so disturbed about is we had one of these play sets when we were little. I remember this so well and we had it all through our childhood so I don't think my parents got the memo of the recall. <laughs> I mean I don't think I was like eating the paint on the play sets anyway but we definitely had this. So maybe that's why I'm so messed up today. I don't know. Anyway, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this Winnie the Pooh video. If you guys enjoy my videos about nostalgia and old TV shows and movies, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you want me to do next. Don't forget that the new Halloween merch is linked down below in the description. And uh, yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye.